Tom Hanks may be one of the most prolific actors in Hollywood. He's well recognized throughout the globe. You could show his picture to someone in a remote village in the jungle and they just might be able to identify him. He is iconic to say the least and a veritable comedic genius to boot. But everyone has to start somewhere. For Hanks, it was stage acting, appearing in Niccolo Machiavelli's The Mandrake with the Riverside Shakespeare Company. It was right around this time he landed his lead role in the sitcom Bosom Buddies a show that would serve as a jumping-off point launching his career forward into inevitable stardom. Bosom Buddies on its own was nothing special. In fact, critically speaking, it was mostly viewed in a rather unflattering light. We've all got to start somewhere, though. The show may have left something to be desired, but Tom's performance was an early indicator he was destined for bigger and better things. He would be the standout component of the show. Tom and Peter Scolari, the show's co-star, made the best of the show's premise by employing a lot of improvisation which proved to be the show's most defining feature and highlighted Tom's brilliance. The show came from the same producers as Laverne and Shirley, Miller, Mickus, Boyett Productions. And although the show's concept may have been a little limp, it was Hanks and Solari's chemistry that gave the show life. Bosom Buddies followed two bachelors, Kip Wilson and Henry Desmond, played by Hanks and Scolari respectively, in their misadventures in drag living at a female-only apartment building. They are struggling in their careers and can't afford housing anywhere else. So they don women's clothing and employ a bunch of gender stereotypes to create laughs. The show's premise quickly lost the interest of the public and it was canceled after the second season, but it did prove to be instrumental in launching Hanks' career. Let's take a closer look at the show and discover some surprising facts that you may not have known. Make sure you stick around for the whole video. Number 10 is going to blow your mind. Facts First presents Bosom Buddies was Tom Hanks' breakthrough role. 10 Facts but first, show us your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications so you never have to miss another exciting video. Kip and Henry were never intended to be cross-dressers. When the show's creators, Thomas Miller and Robert Boyett, went before ABC to pitch their idea for the show, they had a radically different premise in mind. They saw the show as being a sort of spin-off of their popular show Laverne and Shirley. They wanted to do another buddy comedy, but this time starring male actors. But when they started talking about their concept, they mentioned that Billy Wilder was a huge influence for their idea. The network execs naturally asked them what they meant by this, and they referenced the timeless classic film, Some Like It Hot, as a further reference point for what they had in mind. The network bigwigs must have been summering the memory of Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis in drag because that's what they started expressing how they envisioned Miller and Boyett's new show. Even though this was much different than what they had envisioned, they decided to just roll with it. Good thing they did because the network ended up giving them the green light. Opening Credits Location Flub If you've ever been in New York City, you know that there isn't much in the way of greenery outside of Central Park. Beyond that, there's definitely not a palm tree in sight for hundreds of miles. But audiences won't notice if you disregard this little fact, will they? Oh no, we noticed. In the opening credits, we get a shot of Hanks and Scolari running through the grass and splashing in some puddles in the rain. But there's a major issue. There are palm trees everywhere. This would actually prove to be a bit of a recurring theme of the show's backdrops, clearly not matching up with their stated locations. Kip and Henry work at the ad firm Livingston, Gentry, and Michigan in Manhattan. But Manhattan, more times than not, looks a whole lot like Los Angeles. Kip and Henry are named after bars in Berkeley. Hank and Scolari's characters Kip and Henry are both named after bar and grills on Durant Avenue in Berkeley, California. Both locations are pretty standard fair establishments, offering burgers, fries, nachos, and cheap drinks. They've each been in business for over 50 years now and tend to be popular among college students of the University of California, Berkeley. We're guessing you're as curious as we are to check them out next time we're in the Bay Area. Both bars are still open to this day and look about the same as they did in the 70s when they lent their names to the Bosom Buddies. Tom Hanks received a relatively weak paycheck. For later being one of the highest paid and highest grossing actors in Hollywood, you wouldn't have guessed it by seeing his take home for Bosom Buddies. He was taking in only $2,500 a week for his part in the show. That might sound like a pretty nice chunk of cash, especially for 1980, but to put it in perspective, in stark comparison, Tom would take home $15 million for his part as Woody in Toy Story 4. Today, Mr. Hanks also has a net worth of $350 million. We're guessing if he started losing $2,500 a week, he wouldn't even notice it these days. Tom Hanks would meet his future wife on the set of the show. In Season 2, Episode 7, an episode titled All You Need Is Love, Hanks would first meet the love of his life, Rita Wilson. She played the role of a girl named Cindy. In the episode, she would humorously play the part of Henry's girlfriend. There was just something off about her, though. Was it the fact she worshipped Satan, or was it the fact she was into Henry? You be the judge. 
Even though Hanks and Rita would meet on set in 1981, they wouldn't wed until April of 1988. Hanks recalls first meeting her at this time, but he traces the origins of his first crush on Wilson to an episode of The Brady Bunch where she played a cheerleader. He says that when he first saw her, he remembered thinking, that girl's cute. It must have been love at first pom-pom. Bob Saget played a role on the show, but not one you would have guessed. The future patriarch of the Tanner family in Full House, Bob Saget was the warm-up comedian for the live studio audience of the show. We wonder if he got them going by telling his aristocrats joke. Let's hope not. He got the job after playing the small part of Bob the Comic in the episode The Show Must Go On in 1981. The producers thought he had a certain comedic synergy that meshed well with the general vibe of the show, so they sent him the invite. It was smaller roles like this that eventually propelled Saget into the limelight. Bosom Buddies was filmed on the same stage of numerous classics. Sometimes called the Lucky Stage, Paramount Stage 25 has played host to nothing but hit TV shows that helped jumpstart the careers of many actors. I Love Lucy, Here's Lucy, Cheers, and Frasier all shared the same stage as Kip and Henry. Stage 25 would also play a role in the hit musical Dreamgirls in 2006. Since then, it's been used for the teen sitcom True Jackson VP, which ran from 2008 to 2011. Billy Joel didn't sing his own song for the opening theme. When the show first aired, before it had entered into syndication, it started with Billy Joel's My Life for the opening theme music. Oddly enough, it wasn't Billy Joel singing. There was a pretty wild rumor going around at the time it was actually Tom Hanks singing the iconic song. Alas, it was none other than Gary Bennett that sung the little ditty. Maybe as a result of this pesky urban legend, Hanks chose to sing the song on an episode of 30 Rock two decades later. It would actually be 30 Rock's 100th episode. This guest star packed episode featured over a dozen celebrity guest stars, including the likes of Matt Lauer, Kelly Ripa, and Matt Damon. When the show went into syndication, My Life was swapped out for Stephanie Mills' Shake Me Loose, a decision that was made to cut back on royalty licensing costs. Bosom Buddies reruns switched to a different network. When ABC decided to axe Bosom Buddies after the second season, Hanks went on to bigger and better things. He starred in Ron Howard's romantic comedy fantasy flick Splash. Hanks suddenly skyrocketed into Hollywood stardom. Hoping to cash in on his newfound fame and success, NBC bought the rights to Bosom Buddies from ABC to rerun throughout the summer of 1984. They even tried to convince him to reprise his role for a revival of the series, but Hanks wouldn't have any part of it. He knew his future involved more than a $2,500 a week paycheck on a dicey sitcom. Tom was going to be a movie star. Hanks and Scolari almost didn't star in the show. The producers of Bosom Buddies had other ideas for the lead roles. They were highly impressed with Bobby DiCicco and Perry Lang's performances in the comedy war flick 1941, which took a more lighthearted look at WW2. Can you imagine how different both Bosom Buddies and Tom's career would have been if this was the case? Well, that wraps up our look at the cult classic TV show Bosom Buddies and how it helped launch Tom Hanks' career into the superstar status it is today. For a show that almost didn't even happen and didn't see high ratings during its initial run, it has inadvertently made a huge impact on the entertainment industry. What do you think? Do you think Tom Hanks would still have wound up becoming a household name if he hadn't starred in Bosom Buddies? Or do you think we'd all be saying, Tom who? Let us know in the comments. Also, before you go, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to Facts First for more videos like this.